My name is Duncan Neuhauser. This is the session on, on uh, writing for improvement. Uh, you are confronted with uh, uh, some people who've been doing this for many years, so we're real pros at it, let me tell you, on this one. Uh, my justification for being here is that I've counted the number of person years I have been on editorial boards. So I've been, I'm your nemesis out there making judgments about your paper. Uh, I counted up the number and it's over 140 years on this one. So that's my justification for being here. My colleagues have more um, contributions to make than I do, so I'll pass it on to... You know. Okay, um, my name is Fiona Moss. I'm actually a, a respiratory physician or pulmonologist by trade, um, but I was the founder editor of a journal that's now known as BMJ Quality and Safety, and I'm the current journal, um, current editor of a journal called Post, um, graduate, the Postgraduate Medical Journal. But the real pro is our colleague Jane Smith. Hello. Well, welcome to this session. Yeah, my name's Jane Smith, and I have recently retired from being a deputy editor of the British Medical Journal, uh, where I had responsibility for uh, quality improvement content. Um, and I've still got an association with the journal, um, hence me being here today. So welcome. So Jane's a real professional here. Duncan and I are sort of, sort of <laughs> amateurs around this side. Um, now, before we start, can you just have hands up? Who is currently doing or has done a quality improvement project? Fantastic. How many of you have got a project about which you have yet to write up, that's not written up? That's brilliant, because we're going to hope we're going to get you to write an abstract on those projects today. That's our aim, and we hope we can share that with you. How many of you had papers um, accepted for publication? About probably 20%. How many of you had papers rejected? <laughs> Oh, probably quite a few more. Okay. Um, we'll come on to, 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 to some of that later. Um, just, to, just, to really, just to start and to, to, to set the scene, the reason that we, we started doing this, um, I think Duncan and I worked out, it was probably about 18 years ago we started to, um, um, doing this, um, these sessions, is really because we know that there's a huge amount of quality improvement work out there. And if any of you have been to see the poster um, um, display that there is the 1,200 posters taken out of 2,200 submitted this year, which is an absolute record. You'll see the amount of incredible work that is being done. And clearly it will help if it's shared and communicated. Writing is just one way of communication and publication of this would help others. I've been to some of the, the poster facilitation sessions and the things I have learned just by being there are really quite simple but really quite interesting um, ways in which we can improve quality. For example, as parents leave a hospital after their child has been admitted, asking the parents if they've seen anything that uh, worries them or they think you could be done better. And by doing that, Great Ormond Street have actually managed to uncover two to three critical incidents per week that they didn't know about. Well, that's such an sort of extraordinary, simple, useful piece of quality improvement that actually would be helpful if it was shared. Also, at that time, much of what is being done as audit um, was written up, and actually, quite frankly, was just rather boring and uninformative. Sorry. So, the aim of this session is to really try and help you describe quality improvement in action through, and also we're going to move on to a structure for writing about QI which we hope will help you with your QI work. So through writing to help with the actual QI process. We also want to show that writing can help your thinking. I think it was Descartes who was asked what um, he thought about something. And he said he didn't know until he said. And I'm not sure about you, but I certainly know that if I um, write something, that process of writing actually helps me process my thoughts. And this whole idea that writing can actually be used as part of the thinking process is something that we would like to sort of emphasise to you is why, in fact, you should um, get down to writing. And we also want to, 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 to help you with how to translate your achievements into words. People can write about what they do. Sometimes the writing is actually somewhat opaque and the actual achievement does not come through. So it's important that the words actually are transparent and do convey what you've done. But through this, we actually, and through the structure, we hope to actually really discuss some of the basics of QI. So you can use the writing for that, and really want you to absolutely to try and encourage you and plan and complete your QI project. The structure we use is the same structure that is recommended for the posters. So if you haven't got a poster this year, and you can write something up using this structure, think about um, submitting it for, for next year. 
and really to learn that about process, uh, a process for writing. I mean, how many of you sit down to write and think, oh, that blank sheet, how many of you does that happen to? It certainly happens to me. Okay, well, one of the ways of doing it is, is to try and make it as a process. So it's, it's not just a blank sheet and help, but actually here are the things that I can do. And you sort of fill in the gaps, you know, there's a little bit of painting by numbers, and you actually can sort of do what you need to. Like doing, I mean, I cook a lot. It's like a recipe. You know, you get out the flour. If someone says, just go and bake this, and there's no way of how to do it, then I would be a bit like a rabbit that has seen a stoat. But if I've got a recipe and I know what to do, then it's much easier. And we really, really want to encourage you to, to write it up for publication. I mean, we're going to say this again and again. So that's the objectives we hope we can share with you. Um, there's a lot of you here today, but we really hope we're going to get you all to take part. Can you just, do, how, do you all have some paper with you of some sort? And a pencil. Brilliant, because you're going to need them. Okay, why bother to write well? Well, writing is one of the communication skills. How many of you are healthcare professionals and have done some communication skills as part of your training? Lots of you. How many of you was writing part of that communication school training? About one to about six or seven of you. Actually, that's most, I suppose there's a lot of you here, most that we don't normally get that many. But isn't it extraordinary? We, talk, we, we, we teach communication skills about how to give difficult news to individual patients, empathy, etc. But we don't, we very rarely teach about how to write, particularly in a, in, a, in a world we have now, which is Twitter and email, etc., etc. So a lot of people have done very little training in writing since primary school. Um, and I think that, that, that is something that I think is, is missing. The other reason to write well is so that you can actually communicate, and we will show you in a minute an example of how writing can obfuscate, can actually get in the way of, um, of, uh, of the message. Um, I think it was Orwell who said uh, about good prose, that good prose is like a window pane. You don't see it. It's when you get bad prose and you think, oh my God, I can't, I can't, don't know what these words mean, that actually that's the, that's the problem. So when the message comes through, that's where you, where you want to be. You actually want to engage, in, to engage your readers. So you want your readers to start at the beginning and then you want them to want to read on. Okay? So it's, it's, it's your readers or your customers, you want to stimulate them. And come back to this thing about helping you reflect on your work. So if I write something, then it may, the, the version I do at the beginning is very often very different from the one at the end because some ideas have come, I've reflected and, and, and things change. So that is why we think it is very, very important to get the work, to be able to do it, to get the work published, but also to help you think about it and to improve what you do as you work to improve um, the, the, uh, the care that you're giving. Right, now, get your pens and papers out, can you all? Um, we've got two people with roving microphones, haven't we? Yep. By the way, these slides are all going to be available. Um, tweeting. Do you saying so? You can type, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can type pen, paper, papyrus, parchment, fingers and keyboards. Whoops, I'm just going to unplug myself. That's right, yep. Okay, um, I'm going to put, there's some slides going to go up now, and we're going to give you about 30 seconds, and I want you to write down what comes into your head, and then we're going to randomly choose people to say what they've written on their pads or on their papyrus. On your marks, get set, go. Just write down what comes into your head. Come on, write, quick, quick. <laughs> get that pen down, because someone's soon going to have a microphone put in them. Right, what have you written down? Uh, Colour. Colour. Try not, just to go around. Colour? Danger. Difficult to start. Difficult task. Dress. Do I? Dress. Dress. Traffic light. Traffic lights. Danger. Flag. So what was that? Flag. A red flag. Red flag. Okay. Lots of different things. One word, three letters. Very simple. Danger. Um, um, traffic lights, flags, etc. Okay, so it's one word, and the whole of you here, we've gone round, we'd have had love and passion and other things. Okay, another one's going to go up now. Pens ready, fingers ready, papyrus ready. Just what comes into your head. Doesn't really need too much thinking. Perhaps just try some people towards the back. Because Duncan said they're going to get more questions asked of them. Difficult. Difficult. Okay, oh, it's interesting. There was difficult comes up with those two words. Okay. Complex. Sorry. Efficiency. efficiency. So one is difficult. It's efficiency. Complex. Complex. 
Words? Limiting. Logical. Structure. Logical. Failure. So failure, system, complex. Okay? Next one. It's funny, this always gets a laugh, doesn't it, Duncan? Okay, do you want to start, start at the back? Someone said cold down here already, so... Drink. Drink. Refreshing. Refreshing. Please. <laughs> Bees. Beer. Beer. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. <laughs> Frog. I mean, because I mean, it's actually there's, um, there's Czech Republic, there's beer, there's cold, and there's frogs. I mean, so in a sense, it's, an, it's the advertising campaign that people remember. All sorts of things it, it, it may trigger in you. We were once doing this session, there was a, a participant who had come from, um, I think, Israel, who had never heard of Buzzweiser. So sometimes, um, um, words like this, are sort of, you might not think this was technical, but you know, sometimes um, words are f may be common to us, but may not be common to other people. And this is the final one now. And there's a prize for anyone who can tell me why we've put this up here. Can you, wait, can you get a, a microphone? Because it's difficult to hear. Just put the microphones around. There we go. 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 Target. Sorry? Target. 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 This one here? Time. Sorry? Time. Time? There's one there. Ready? ready. Set, as, as in ready, steady, go. Get set. Ready, get set. Jelly? Jelly. Set goals. So, goal? Group. Goals. Yeah. Group? Okay. Venn diagrams? One for the back? Venn diagrams? Okay, anyone know why this has been put up there? If someone's going to give you an answer. Give us the answer. Because it's the word in the English language with the most meanings. Yes, well done. Round of applause. <laughs> She's been reading Lynn Truss as well. It's, it's a word in the English language with the most meanings. There's badger set, there's tennis sets, there's, there's setting goals, there's you know, get set, go, etc., etc. But it's really just to just be very sort of careful of words. Words can have different, uh, different responses to people, and also words can mean a huge number of things. So that's just the first warm up exercise for you for your parchment, your iPads, or your pieces of paper. Oops, wrong, wrong way. Whoops. Right, getting down to writing. Now, there's three S's. It's something to, to remember, very easy, three S's. Okay? And we're going to probably go through most of this. There's story. That's the work you're doing. There's a structure. That's how you write it. And finally, there's style. We're not going to say too much about style, but Jane's going to give you a quick foray into matters of style. Jane. Thank you. Yeah, we're not going to say a lot about style today because... I, you, know, you could write chapters on it. Uh, the important thing is just to be clear. Fiona's already quoted the, um, the quote from, from George Orwell about good prose being like a window pane. Your reader shouldn't trip up over the prose. The importance is clarity. Um, so George Orwell, who wrote this, who wrote a lot about writing, uh, had some tips for good writing. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about these. Um, I think the most sensible bit of advice to give people is to, if you get stuck, just remember, um, and the posters are a very good example of this actually, uh, just remember if, if you were sitting next to your friend in a coffee shop and they said, what are you working on? You would turn around and say, oh, well, we've got this problem with X and we've started to, to look into it and we're trying to improve it. And you'd say it very directly and very simply and your friend would, would, get, would get the message pretty quickly. And that's why I say the posters are a very good example of that. They, 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 you've got limited words and a few images. And actually people tend to write their posters in rather direct, clear prose, which, which is great. Whereas when you come to write longer things, there's a tendency to get a bit more bureaucratic about it. Um, and and what, what I'm trying to say is stick to the simplicity of posters and that conversation in the coffee shop. Um, another writer, 
about writing was Rudyard Kipling, the, po- the poet at the turn of the 20th century. Um, he was a journalist to start with, and he wrote a poem called um, Honest Serving Men. Um, and the honest serving men are the, are the short words, the question what, why, and when, and how, and where, and who. And if you go to journalism school and you're taught to write news stories, um, all the emphasis is on what your reader wants to know is the answers to all those questions. What are you talking about? When did it happen? Who, who are the players? Um, what and uh, where and who? And w- one of the things in, in reading quality improvement um, submissions is that Sometimes people sort of get a bit, a bit uh, befuddled by, by their language and think they have to write proper. So, and, and you're asking all the time, well, who did that? And, okay, tell us what exactly you did. Um, and and if, you, if you look at a, new, a newspaper, so this is one of the free newspapers I got on the, on the train this morning, um, you, you'll find that the journalists answer these questions. So here's a headline. Breast implant fraudster booed by victims in court. And the first paragraph goes... A defiant businessman who made millions by selling faulty breast implants to thousands of British women was booed by his victims in court yesterday. There was actually rather a lot of information in there. So who, the defiant businessman, what, he made millions. Um, to, again, who, to thousands of British women. And what happened, he was booed. And then it goes on, fraud suspect Jean-Claude Mars who calls the claimants money grabbers, faces up to five years in prison following the collapse of his company, Poly Implant Prosthese. So a lot of information, and it's all very specific. It's, you, know, you know exactly who it is, what, where, when. Hang on to that. It's, it's important advice. Um, as Fiona said, you should, you should all have access to the slides, um, and I'm not going to go over all of these in detail. Um, you can look at some of them later. But again, Orwell had a lot of guidance about writing, some of which isn't that relevant. Um, the one I want to highlight here is a, 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 that last one about don't use a foreign phrase, a scientific word, or a jargon word, if you can think of an everyday English equivalent, may not be good advice for your readership. They might want you to use a scientific word. Rather, this, this was aimed at lay people. So the, the other thing about style is think who your audience is. You would write differently if you're writing a leaflet for patients than if you're writing a, a quality improvement report for your peers. Uh, the one I want to highlight is never use the passive where you can use the active. And I'll show you an example of what I mean in a minute. Uh, but first of all, there was, there was another set of guidance on good writing by two Americans, again, early 20th century called Strunk and White. Um, and so similar things about omit needless words, use the active voice rather than the passive. Um, and they're quite good on paragraphs too. But let me highlight paragraphs. Paragraphs, I think people don't really think about how they write paragraphs. And in many cases, we write them naturally. If you're writing a series of bullet points of the points you want to make, and you then expand each of those bullet points into a paragraph... Um, the chances are that you'll write a pretty decent paragraph if if you stick to to that bullet point. You might need to expand it to two if the idea gets a bit complex. Um, But if you look at lots of paragraphs, you'll see that the opening sentence actually tells you what the paragraph's about. The rest of it elaborates it. And ideally, there's a little wind-up sentence at the end. But let me show you what I mean about, about about passive speech. And in... In English language teaching, uh, particularly in science subjects, there is a sort of belief that you need to write in the passive. And actually, it's very hard to read. Um, I, I, I'll ask those of you in the room for whom English isn't a native language, isn't your first language, and I suspect that you, you find that quite difficult to read. So data obtained from the audits were analysed. Um, significant problems were identified. Uh, delay in physician input was identified. Um, well, when actually all they mean, really, is our audit showed problems in preoperative and postoperative care. Patients were slow to be admitted from the emergency department and physicians didn't assess them prom- promptly. Again, it's much more how you'd speak. You, you, would, you would never say the previous sentence if you were talking to your friend in the coffee shop, uh, but you might say that one. So that, that is, um, yeah, and as I say, don't, don't worry too much about this, but, but just remember that directness when you're coming on to do the next exercise. Uh, we're now back to 
story. Excellent. Which is thank, you, Fiona. Thanks, any, any questions for Jane? All this is on, mm. going to be available on the slides, so it'll be there. You can have the example of the paragraphs to see the one that is really clunky and actually difficult to read. Even if, you, if English is your first language, it's clunky. You don't quite get it. You have to go back and read it again. The second one, much shorter, much clearer. You get what it's about. Um, any, any quick questions for Jane? Or you can ask them later ask them as you're doing the exercise. Right, we're now going to, we're going to spend the bulk of the time on story, because it's going to be your stories, and then a little bit at the end about structure. Okay? And the structure is, again, you can take it away to do it. Um, so this is, um, there we go, the story. Right, so this is about your story and those projects that you've either done or that you actually want to, to write up. What we want you all to do now is to recall a quality improvement work that you would like to share. So something you've written up or something that you would, would like to write up. Something you've done or so, and or something you'd like to write up. Anyone not have anything that they could write about? Okay, so, any colleagues, if so, just work with somebody next to you and, and just, just work, with, we'll work with them. I think it's just one or possibly two people. So the, so the parchment, the iPad or the paper, whatever you've got. We want you just to write about it now in a paragraph or two. Okay? We want you to write about it now in a paragraph or two. Just want you to start this writing. Because we could go on talking about it forever, us three, but actually that's fine. The whole point is to get you to do some writing. So we're going to give you a five minutes, Duncan, is it five, ten minutes, to just, just, ten. just to write this down. We will be wandering around to help you if you want it. Just write about the improvement project that you have been working on or have worked on that you would like to share. Okay, any questions? About 10 minutes, I think. About 10 minutes. And this will form the basis of the abstract, which we hope you will have written by the time we get to the next hour, 3 o'clock. Okay? It's called speed, speed writing. Not speed dating, it's speed writing. So on your marks, get set, write. I'll just switch it off and cut the mic. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's all right if you wish to write this in Italian, you can do so. <laughs>
Yes, they, the next session. They've been got to, yes, that's right. They've got to talk to it. That's right. Yeah, that's they, the talk to it. Yeah, right. Listen carefully. And then we've got, then we've got the headlines after that. And that's right. Don't any questions? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Then that moves into yeah. the later yeah. of the headline. Okay. So these are two parts. Give you about two more minutes. Just calculated if each of you written 100 words and there's 240 of you. That's 24,000 words. We've just, just, it's fantastic, isn't it? It's creation here. <laughs> How many words to a thesis? <laughs> you put this, put this all online and you put it Next year we'll get it all online immediately and we can... just recorded the sound of 240 people writing. That's because it's said to the symphony. Okay. I think this is more relaxing than the yoga session. The next bit is not going to be quite so quiet. Um, you probably have written about 24,000, 30,000 words between you. Um, that's pretty efficient. What we'd like you to do now is to turn to your neighbour, hopefully somebody that doesn't work with you, and just quietly read that paragraph to them. 
And the person who's listening, we just want you to ask any questions as, as you as you're read the paragraph and just record the questions that you're asking. And then we'll ask you to swap round. Okay? So as a person who's been writing, you'll have a listener or reader. Okay? So they will listen to, to your account and they will ask any questions. They want to fill in any gaps. Okay? And do it in freeze if you want. Do it in freeze if you want. Sorry? Do it in freeze. Uh, yes, you can do it in twos or threes. Yeah, that's fine. But when you read it, Sorry, you yeah. can't add any additional words. <laughs> Well, it you takes longer with three times. I know it does. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 It'll be only be one person. It'll only be one person. Have a seat. I know. I know, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Two's or threes, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> you now record 120 people reading. We don't have another Italian speaker. Here. Okay. Okay, that's fine. We can't. We can't. We can't. Let me keep roaming around. Yeah, I'll keep doing that too. Now, it's no fair. Elaborate. You have to do just what's on that page. You may even be working with 240 people. It's not, is it? It's not working with 240 people, is it? Time. They're out somewhere there. Can't be. And they don't have the chance to ask you to elaborate. You have to do what's on the page. If you're the okay. Well, you, one of you, you'll change roles. You know, you'll read and she'll listen and then you'll change and you'll read and she'll listen. All okay? What? Yeah. Uh, did you understand what she said? Okay. Is there anything you could improve? What she did. In other words, you're giving feedback, and you said, "Yes, I understand what you're saying. That's a positive sign." On that one, and you could even feed it back and say, "I think you're saying this," and that would be a check on whether she's gotten you, you've gotten back, and it's still correct. No, no, Are you okay there? She, you've read yes, yours you sure? already? No, and you've read yours. You know. Well, let me go back to where the idea is to exchange and give feedback to each other. So she's told you the story. She's told you where it's happening. You need someone to read it to. You're, you're okay. No, 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 I'm sorry. Right, you. You're okay. That's fine. That's just, oh, thank you. As long as you're okay, that's fine. You're all okay. Just doing stuff. Not reading. Fine. Okay. Yeah, fine. I actually yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, yeah. okay. We, we could get you to join one of these other groups. I'm happy with that. It's important that you listen. Are you writing in, in uh, Norwegian? Oh, all right. On that one. You okay there? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. But, Okay. Okay. Well, do feel free if you want just to listen to one of their presentations and all of this one. Um, and then you can also see that if you're writing something and working on it, when you go back, finding people who will listen to what you say and say, I understand what you're saying or not, things like that. Do you come on something? Yeah, look. Uh, as now read it to your <laughs> You see so many manuscripts where you look at nobody's read this. I see so many manuscripts where I say to myself, nobody has read this. These guys, but okay, the yeah. author. And if somebody else had read it, they could answer a lot of these questions that aren't there in the article. Any comments here? So make no. sure you share. Uh, they're, busy, they're too busy doing stuff. Difficult yeah. criticism. Well, no, they're just commenting on what we're doing. It's difficult yeah. in Sweden yeah. because in Sweden everybody's so polite. They, they're not harsh on each other. Well, I know. I, was, I did not wish to, to make any generalization about Norwegian culture, but I said I do know something about Swedish culture, and I know that the politeness is, is very strong there. When what you're really asking for is the yeah. Well, you would have been a, you should have been a well, it's just like, well, if you do chemistry at school, we say, the Bunsen burner was lit, <laughs> that would be, rather than we lit the Bunsen burner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, so that's why I right. said... So I that, that, the one there was um, our patients were dying rather than data showed that, big or you know, our, our results showed that patients were dying. Data showed that patient mortality was worse than... It, no, sorry, Pro- problems uh, were identified. The, it's we very identified care- the the criticism is careful and polite. So you, yeah, never, straightforward. Uh, unlike other parts of the world, I don't see people slamming their hands on the table and saying... You wouldn't say a coffee was bought for me. That that would be. You said Jane bought me coffee. Uh, there are other cultures. So it, you, 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 put the obje- you put the objects into it. What a stupid thing. Oh, yeah, but that's the other thing. Is it, it uses less words. <laughs> Absolutely. It uses, yeah, it uses less words. So it makes it easy. You have to fit the style of what you're comfortable with. You never need to wear that. You can often take it out. Sometimes you do, but you almost absolutely. Any word you can take out, you should. And some of the didn't you hear? I mean, it says people will sometimes use the word commence rather than start. So flowery sort of French type language mm-hmm. is a bit, Did but actually Anglo-Saxon start is much more straightforward. Yeah. And no suggestions for improvement. I'm, let's commence proceedings. No, I'm going to start the lesson. Mm-hmm. Not me too. Yeah. So uh, that, that's going to be the next stage. So just being straightforward, writing, short sentences. I want to make sure you're getting your message across to someone else. So you have now. Are you two based in this room? So you do yeah. this room yeah. all the time. See what you have to so say. See interesting see variety of stuff. Actually, you're yeah. saying it in a reasonable way. And there should be an underlying message is if you are writing, make sure other people are looking at what you're writing. Oh, yeah. uh, They can give advice. And you're not helpful if you just say, that's very nice. Actually, people don't do things for money largely. I mean, once at a certain level, if you're poor and there's the things that you need, but actually, it. They will. They need uh, some money, but actually, the thing that makes them go and get Did the extra mile is often not money. I didn't understand. It's, it's, it's relationships, etc. Et mm. Or I couldn't repeat what you were doing. And that, those are the important questions you need to have answered before yeah, you submit it to a journal. Can can the reader of your paper repeat what you did? And that's the basis of education. Okay, have, have you done you just, just the one story? Have you have you swapped over yet? You didn't get the same just on one. That's arguably. No, you have you swapped over? You have. Typically supported activity. If I repeat what you did and get the offers of results, then we have a. Have you swapped over stories? Yeah. Um, so, so it's that those kind of things. Yes. Should be okay, you swapped over stories. Fantastic. He's a timekeeper. That's not a good debate. The yeah. most important article written in half a century went through fifty-six revisions. Have you, have you swapped over stories? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to write the most famous article in your field for half a century, fantastic. I see my people who do more than one language. I just do English. Fantastic. The final report of the Rand Insurance. Are you okay? We swapped over stories. Fantastic. Massive trial. Fantastic. Millions of dollars to carry out, and essentially showed the impact of health insurance coverage on usage. So it's a it's a great question. Most people have swapped. So how long should we have? Two or three minutes. A lot of people like these have already finished. No, oh, no, okay. Mm-hmm. So shall we say two or three minutes? And just okay, to... yeah. okay, can we just give you another two or three minutes? And what we're going to ask you when we stop, we're going to ask you for the questions that you've asked. Some examples of the questions. So another couple of minutes. You might need to repeat that. Yes, okay. Because the okay. guy said the sound doesn't travel so that works. So repeat it down the same We're going to finish in about a couple of minutes and the questions we're going to ask you are the questions that you've been asking each other. When when you um, go to to, to get get sort of responses, could you repeat them into the microscope, into the microscope, microphone, because they're not very easy to hear. If you did that, would be fantastic. Some of them I didn't understand myself. Oh well, that's alright. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you still could share it. Well, it'd, it'd be a bit more than that. But I mean, if you could just repeat it, because it, it is difficult to it's difficult to hear sometimes, and it's, maybe you can hear it near there. I think it's because the microphones don't carry that that well. Well, after that, it's, they then do this. The questions. Listen carefully. That's what they're doing. That's what this is. What we're doing. We've moved on. Hmm? I need to talk to run that for you. Oh, you have 
Yeah. I think that's fine. Write down any questions. It's, it's the headlines. Up. Well, then, then we just do. The, then we do the headlines. Yeah. So we just do this. We get a few. We're going to get a few of their questions. Shall we stop them, Duncan? Uh, Ready to stop? How are we time-wise? We're 2.15. Can you stop them now, shall we? Yes. And then you have your two PowerPoints, and then we come back. Well, we get them to do some... We get, 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 we get some of them. We get some of the feedback. And then we, then we do um, headlines. Mm -hmm. OK, can we stop you now? Thank you. Uh, so it's fantastic, actually. Clearly, lots of stories um, being told. We now just really want uh, one or two of you just to put your hands up, just just to say what questions you, as the listener, were asking the reader. Any hands up for someone's going to just just um, give us the questions that you were asking your reader? Just an example. Just an example. Yeah. Somebody here. Hang on, we need the microphone. Oh, sorry, who is your audience you're writing to? So who is your audience you're writing to? And, and as, the, as the person who wrote that, was that a helpful question? That was a, a very helpful question, but in fact, the other question that was even more helpful in a way was the first one, which was, he asked me to give a whole background on the subject matter. Uh-huh. Okay, that's... That's interesting. So I mean, the, the, the two are connected. So it's giving the context. And actually that word will come back again because the context is hugely important. It is, if you like, the where. In sort of, it, you may think where is sort of in London North West 1, but actually the where is broader. You know, it's a primary care setting in Uganda or a secondary care setting in the middle of London. Any other questions? This one here? I, I, Did you wait for the microphone? Because we just needed to... Um, I, I asked for some clarification on, on elements of it, the terminology that I didn't understand. So just asking for clarification about w what did you mean by high reliability uh, errors. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, two of these questions, you'll notice that they start with those, those of Kipling's words, who, what. And I suspect some of you said, how did you do that? Or why did you do that? Who? Uh, when? Uh, am, I, am I right? Yeah. yeah. They're all those very specific... Well, really, tell me more. It's very specific sort of facts that people want. Yeah, my, my partner used a word like early detection, and mm. I ask her, which period do you consider to be early detection? Yep, okay. So she writes the word early, and you go, what do you mean by early? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, it sounds very simple, but again, it's your reader that is your... And you're, you're, the, the question that came over there about you know, who is your reader is really, really important um, because you, we tend to think of the reader as somebody inside our own heads. No, the last person it is is the person inside your own head. But I think that's what we tend to do naturally. And I think that's not sort of the, that, that's, that, that, that gets in the way of, of our writing. Or we think it is, well, I think you know, it, it is the headmistress or headmaster that was very strict when we were very young. That we've got to write something very special for them. It's not them either. Any other questions? Any, any other examples? Any hands up? Someone over there? Okay, but you've, you've got the drift. It's, it is the skippling serving men. The other, just a bit of hint from this is when you're writing, two sort of things very, very helpful to do. One is when you've written it, put it in a drawer and don't read it for a week. And then read it yourself as the reader. Very useful exercise. And the second bit of advice is give it to a colleague. Not necessarily somebody in the same project but somebody who you might imagine to be a reader. So when I was editor of the journal, um, the Quality and Safety Journal, I imagined the reader to be my actual, actual a medical director or actual director of nursing or actual chief executive. Um, I wanted them to, in the papers that we published, to go, aha, uh -huh. yes, we could take that and do that here. So you've got to imagine where you want to have the impact for your work, and then that, and then, then that will help you. So trying to imagine the actual person, someone you know, but give a work to... Um, to a colleague to read and ask them not to, not to go, yeah, yeah, it's really nice, but to really be a critical friend. And again, those six words are very helpful. Okay, now then, 
we're going to do an exercise now, which actually I think possibly next time we might do in a slightly different way, just because there's a lot of twittering going around. There's somebody, we know people are tweeting it. Please do keep tweeting, that's fantastic. Um, uh, we now want you to write your work as a headline. Now, we might or might not like everything the journalists write, but they are very, very, very good at writing. That is what they do. And there's a lot that we can learn from them. If you read, as Jane did, a, 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 any article in a newspaper, even if you don't approve of their techniques, etc., etc., you'll find that the message is in the first sentence or the title. That's it. So even if you don't read any more, you've got the message. If you read some of our healthcare literature, you're very lucky if you get the message at the end of the discussion. Yeah? Now, come on. I mean, come on. You've been through lots of training, in a sense, but you wouldn't do that if you were telling information to patients. So, we, you know, communication to patients, we're very clear about the message you've got to be, it's got to come across. Somehow we forget all that when it comes to writing. So this is really to get you to focus on your message. We want you to write the Sun headline. Now, here's some examples of headlines. And really, please just, we just want you to just tell us what these headlines are about. Then we want you to do the same for you. To the best of our British. If you're not from the UK, the UK actually have, we have some very good newspapers. We also have these things called tabloids, um, who have had very bad moments, but they are good at headlines. So here's the first one. Amy stole Coke from Kate's bag. It's quite an old story, this, but can anyone tell me what they think that's about? Again, so put your hand up and give the microphone, because otherwise... Is your microphone here? <laughs> it might baffle It's, it's some... Amy Winehouse and Kate Moss. Yes, it's Amy Winehouse, who's a jazz singer, stole some coke from one of our best models' handbags, OK? That's the story. You didn't need to read any more. I mean, yes, there's a bit about the who, what, why, when. Next one. Boozy Brits give NHS a sore head. Anyone like to put... That? Someone not from the UK like to put their hand up and, and say what you think this is about. Anyone? There's, there's somebody at the back there. You're going, yep. And if talking to the microphone, because it's... it's all long this room I assume that it's related to the complications of uh, alcohol absolutely and absolutely <laughs> um, it's uh, boozy Brits turning up into our casualties and actually just filling our casualties up absolutely but that's it experts admit their forecast is a washout that's also rather British it's also rather British I'm afraid we are f obsessed by the weather <laughs> hands up anybody it was more than raised. There's a hand down here. Usual faulty heather forecasts. Yes, absolutely. So the, 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 the uh, meteorologists get it wrong again. And this is a full story in one sentence. How a broken tumbler costs one pub £18,000. Hands up, somebody. Anybody? There's a hand over there. Um, I assume a, a tumbler broke in a pub and they got hurt and they sued the pub. Something absolutely. Else. They sued the pub for £18,000, absolutely. And then we've got a few more just coming up. Um, and this is, a, this is a, Asda withdraws corned beef after 50% nag traces. <laughs> we've got a bit of a problem with horse meat. We don't eat it, but we obviously do. We don't know. And all our supermarkets are having to look, having to do DNA. Ten teens in hospital on mind bedding party drug rocket fuel. They got some sort of lighter fuel that was a drug that was like drug, drug rocket fuel and they actually got themselves um, in a pretty bad way. Next one. Anyone like to say what this one's about? <laughs> Any volunteers? <laughs> Too much time and absolutely and there was a... There was a well, this is our caring Prime Minister. <laughs> Just the other week. No job, then no Bennett's view. Um, and basically, that uh, they're taking away benefits, which is a bit mean. Now, this one is real, and I'm, we're not going to ask you to do it. Uh, clap, jack, flap, jack, whack, rap, clap, jack. You can get absolutely into things that just sound fantastic, and nobody knows what they mean. Flapjacks, those of you not from the UK, are sort of OT biscuits. They're actually quite nice. You can sometimes get them and they're triangular. And these were kids that were throwing it across the room and hitting each other on the nose. One got quite allegedly badly hurt, and then there was a rap 
clapped her, so they, they got into trouble. The, the school that was actually serving them got into problems and they had to withdraw them for health and safety reasons. It, this is a headline that just, just sort of, you know, headlines to, to beat all headlines. But the point is that the story can be, can be, can be absolutely concentrated into, into one centre. So now what we would like you to do is to, with the person or three or four of you, take one or two of the stories and just write a headline. Your own stories. Yes, your own stories. Your own stories. Not, not these stories. Um, <laughs> obviously. Or perhaps not obviously. Um, j- j- just you, and then we're, going to, then, then we're going to ask you just to volunteer just to give us a headline and we will see if we can work out what your story is about. So get into groups three, four, however you are, and just see if you can do some headlines. Got about five or ten minutes? Yeah. Duncan. Uh, you, you, you should pay a lot of attention to the headline because, as you know, the title, most readers will get no farther than that. And if you don't grab the reader's attention with your title, they're not going to read your abstract. So it is important what you do to convey that message. So you've got about five, ten minutes? Five. Five minutes. In, in groups, just get some of those stories you've been writing about and write a headline. Because they want the most time to do that. Yeah, so now they'll revise it with the questions yeah. and everything else. And you'll either pack this quickly or you Yeah, yeah. Place. I think five, if you get eventually list? people maybe check with about eight, mm. if they're a group, then we can yeah. reduce the number. Oh, we're going to the more, yes. We just, we just put about five or six. And how long are they allowed to, um, to revise their work in the structure? Well, actually, tell you what we might do. Yeah, okay. So we could actually go, okay, we just need to begin five minutes revising and then on to the structure. Yeah. Oh, I'd go into the structure. I'd go structure, yes, it within it, it, actually. Because that's the most useful bit. Okay, have you got some headlines? You're doing headlines? Yeah. Yeah? No, 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 it's just like... <laughs> Getting some headlines? Yeah. Good. You got some headlines yet? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Excellent. You got headlines? Wow. That's quick. James, should we should we get them to come up and and and, and, and read the headline or how should we do it? No, I think it could take too much time. Oh, okay. I mean, just, do what we'll just do the front, just do the front, just actually much to the front ones at the back ones. Yeah. I'm going to speak to the top of the edge of the front ones. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. front yeah. Because we've only really got half an hour left. Mm. We've got half an hour left. Mm? We've got half an hour left. Yeah. And yeah. um, um, we'll get the most value yeah. out of going to get the structure. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is, this is, this is important in this, but I can see this is important. Mm. But it's a, it winds them up a bit in the world. And next year we should do it on Twitter. We should tweet. They should do a tweet. Yeah, we should. Yeah. the meeting point but no one else I oh, forget oh, it's okay. not your problem not my problem it'll be mine in the last time yeah. are you doing anything to research what comes to facilitate I've got to find Krishna that's what I'm going to do for this evening but I can Leave you. I'll be, I'll be around. Or alternatively, you can do the team lead a bit and I'll facilitate. I'll come down. Okay. Hopefully, I have enough people. Um, 
I think we ought to be stopping them. Okay. That's right. Cross from writing it into or rewriting it. Don't come, on, don't come on. He's over there. He'll come back. Okay. Are you ready with the... Probably keep it the ones near the front, because otherwise we're going to be, yeah. Most of the feedback's going to be the front, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I, I, would just, I, I would just suggest one that one each arm, yeah. Okay. Keep, keep the... Right, there's microphones either side. We'd like someone to volunteer a headline. There's one there. Wait for the microphone, because that's you need that so you can be heard. We've got two versions. <laughs> the first one is, Dynamic Junior Doctor Helps to Fix Broken Hearts. Okay, Dynamic Junior Doctor Helps to Fix Broken Hearts. Anyone like to hazard a guess as to what that project's about? Someone else take the microphone. There's someone there? <laughs> Thank you. Um, another bomb in Baghdad, but now it reaches the airport. Yep. Okay, you know, just before that, we, ju ju we just want to have a, the feedback on what people okay. think that, oh. that one's about. Okay, yes. Does anyone like to hazard a guess about what that project's about? About the broken hearts, the, about the broken hearts, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, um, I can say that something. Yeah. yeah um, I think there's some kind of love there, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic, that's lovely, that's brilliant. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Anyone want a more boring um, response to that? That's very good. It's an improvement made by the junior cardiologist. Say it again? An improvement by the junior achieved by, yeah, by a junior, junior cardiologist. cardiologist. Yes, the so junior cardiologist see what the problem is and fixes it. Yeah, yeah, give or take. Yeah, go on. It's so boring. It was, it was um, improvement in an angiography referral yeah. service. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think the broken hearts might have yeah, seen it, the, the loved one is much, much it was better. Impossibly actually. dull. So just so. rewrite, rewrite the story. Another headline. One over there. And then somebody over here can say what they think it's about. Right. Um, improving patient engagement, key to preventing 30 day readmission. Improving patient engagement. Key to preventing 30-day readmission. Key to preventing 30-day readmission. Well, I think I know what that's about already, and I think it's a very good headline. Anyone else anyone would like to hazard a guess? With the, anyone with a microphone would like to hazard a guess? You want to hazard a guess? That would have thousands of readers if you have that answer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, in, in the sense, there's someone here. Thanks. I mean, what I take from that is that if you engage patients well at the beginning of their treatment, then they're more likely to be adherent and follow, follow direction, and they're less likely to be readmitted. Yeah, absolutely. So if you engage them that they know what's happening, they're less likely, for all sorts of reasons, to, to, want to, 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 to need to be readmitted. Sometimes, actually, I think it's just because they know that actually there's someone out there. They don't feel they've gone into the black hole. You go from hospital to, to primary care. You often think, you know, who's looking after me? But yes, that's, that's a really nice headline. A couple more. There's one here. Oh, there's lots more. Yeah. And then, okay, the one there, and then, sorry, you've got a microphone. Guy, the, the, you, and then next one. Yeah. Imprisonment for quacks to save the public. Imprisonment for quacks to save the public. I didn't quite. Can you just. Imprisonment of facts. Quacks. Quacks. Facts. For quacks. Facts. Quacks to save, save the, the public. public. Whoa. Imprisonment of quacks to save the public. Whoa. Bad dog. That sounds like a. Anyone like to hazard? Duncan, you'd like to read? Uh, uh, it certainly comes across to me. I was, that, that will grab a lot of attention, that title. Uh, although I, I think you could add to the title, um, where, is this, where do, are you proposing this being done? And maybe a particular uh, health-related domain. This may be an area, you know, malaria or 
heart disease or what have you. So adding two more words would get, be, get a lot more specific about what you're focusing on rather mm -hmm. than condemning all healthcare workers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the I mean, prison impacts are actually doing false things. Would be a, something that, one, that one might, indeed, I don't know whether the person that owns the, um, um, the headline that you wrote out, the, the breast implants company, whether he's a doctor or not, he may well go to, to prison for, for what he's done. And there was a discussion this morning on our radio about imprisonment of somebody who was involved in some research, um, some scientific fraud. Um, dirty doctors killing you. Dirty doctors killing you. Okay, that's a great one. Any, um, anyone like has to guess what that's about? Hand hygiene. Hand hygiene, absolutely. Dirty doctors killing you. There's somebody over the microphone, another headline? Yeah, we had um, Swedish blonde survey says, I do, I do, I do. Whoa! <laughs> Swedish blonde survey says, I do, I do, I do. Time to finish this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want a subheading to that title. <laughs> So tell us a bit more about that. We're a bit flummoxed. Um, a, We're short a of speakers. It was just a survey in Sweden um, saying they, they like the, the improvement in the handbook that they've been given. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay, one more, and then we've got to move on. There's a lot of work to do. Oh, lots of hands. There's one here. Oh, okay. Who's got the microphone? Gentleman here with his hand right up. Broken leg, which drug is the culprit? Broken leg, convert. Which drug is the culprit? Broken leg, which drug is the culprit? And I presume it's elderly care with falls that have actually been given the wrong drugs, etc. There's a fantastic headline. So we've got a bit more time, we go on and get more. But you get the drift, you get the point. You can do that, it's very easy to do it, and that's what your story is about. And you're getting your story right is hugely important. We are a species of storytellers. You know, when we're little, we want to, you know, mummy and daddy tell us stories. Your children come, you read them stories. I mean, don't be put aside, your story is sort of the story of the work that you have done. And so you need to get it in a way that you could... Um, you can write it for others. So it's not to belittle what you're doing, but actually rather the other, but actually to make it something that's clear and transparent. Now, we've got about 20 minutes left, which means you've now got 20 minutes in which to write that abstract. Um, we're going to just talk a little bit about structure, because this will help you do it. So it's going to make it not such a difficult process. So, on to structure. Structures can really help the process of writing, because it basically it's like having headings for you. It's essential for some journals, just an aside, if you're thinking of publishing, go to the journal in which you're thinking of publishing, look at the structures they use, and use that structure. I mean, it's very simple, but as an editor, the number of times that doesn't happen is surprisingly large. It seems a very simple instruction. So you just you need to, to, to use the structure for the journal, the article type. But also, the structure, the one we're going to give you, um, um, I suggest, is, is useful for helping you structure your thoughts. Structures first came into medical articles, I think, in the 1950s. And a man called Sir Peter Medua put them into action for clinical and scientific papers. Before that, there really wasn't any structure. So if you go back to old papers, they're, they're written in a fairly sort of loose structure, more difficult to, to read. So, structures provide a logical sequence. They also contain the story. The whole point is to contain the story. Setting objectives, so knowing the why early on is important. And continuity between the sections is also important. And the, as you write, you need to link back to the why time and time again. And the end should connect with the beginning. So dis any discussion should relate to an, in uh, to, should relate to an introduction. It's, it's, a lot of papers do sort of meander sort of from an objective, then it's not quite the same one through the methods, etc. So this is just a bit of general advice. Now, with um, BMJ Quality and Safe in the early days, we didn't have a special structure for quality improvement reports. And it was quite clear that it was difficult for people to write up quality improvement because it's a cyclical thing. It's not actually um, a linear process. And so the structure we're going to show you and share with you is the one that the BMJ use of quality improvement, postgraduate medical journal does, um, BMJ quality and safety does, and also it's used um, largely for the posters that you see here, and it's meant to reflect this. 
we came across this with a, with a, a study that was done by the Sick Children's Hospital in Belfast, where if, you, if children have meningitis, two, three things you need to do. One is you need to give prophylaxis to other children they've been in contact with. You need to give them hearing tests because they can become deaf. You need to know that for their schooling. And they should have a neurological consult. Three things have been, been, been shown to be really um, um, helpful. They found that actually only about 20% or 15% of children were getting this. And then did an audit and it was all better. Much better, up to 95%. So we wrote back this interesting paper, but what happened? And actually it was through the discussion with the um, um, authors that actually it had been quite difficult making the change that they needed to make. It turned out what they did in the end was the, the task of those three tasks used to belong to the junior doctors, the residents, who changed every three months. So it was very difficult keeping it going. What they did was they gave that, that task to the nursing, to the nursing staff who were permanent, and having done that, they then got the, the increase in, um, um, in, the, uh, in all these bits of process being done. But it, it was quite difficult getting that into an ordinary paper. So this is how we came to this structure. So first is context. We've used that word before. You need to know what sort of unit it is you are, you are talking about. And then an outline of the problem. Again, I would suggest you really need to make sure it is patient-centred. Then you need to look at the key measures of improvement. So in that example, 100% of children should all you know, get their hearing test. Process of gathering information, how did you find out the, how the problem was? How did you interpret it? Strategy for change, what did you do? Did you go and shoot all the surgeons? Did you sack them? What happened? How did you get those dirty doctors to, to wash their hands? You know, did you sort of, what did you do? Um, and then, then how did you implement it? And that's often the difficult bit, because it's often not clean. It's often actually, there's some sticky bits in it. Ruth Carnell was talking on large scale about the difficult problems that she had had on that large scale change. But there's always somebody who doesn't want to change, even small scale change. So that's sometimes the most useful bit of information. And then the effects of change, when you reassess what happened, and then the lessons learnt, messages for others. So that is a structure. What we're going to suggest you do now, you've got about 10 minutes, see if you, you've got the um, information from your um, readers that listen to you, see if you can very quickly write your um, abstract now using those headlines. Okay? On your marks? You've written a paragraph or two, you've had a discussion about it, you know you've got to know what the nub of your story is. Just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And, and those questions that your colleagues asked you should help you flesh out some of the. So you start, the with, the, you start out with the where, then there's a what. So what and why, actually, it's why, then the what, how. So you can actually put those, those questions in, in, into that. Just see if you can do that. And then we'd hope you've got the first draft of the poster that you're going to submit for <laughs> next year's forum. There's an ulterior motive, this, obviously, so we can actually increase the number of posters Is being this submitted. 10 minutes? It's, we've got 10, it's got 10 minutes. 10 minutes? So that's a minute, a section. <laughs> and a couple over. And a couple over to read it through. Sorry, the tabloid stuff. No, not not a punch, punch yet. Yes, yeah. Okay, yes. Yes. No, no. It's a, we'll come time. That's a good point. At the end. Yes. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. 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 Sometimes the title goes so much fascinating. We should have got you two to do it as well. We should have got you two to do it as well. <laughs> Yeah. 
and the title should reflect what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, in a sense, you wouldn't use a dirty doctor one. I mean, that is a type of yeah, you, you'd, you'd have something that, that was a sort of um, you know, hand washing improves patient outcomes, or mm -hmm. something like that, or, or doesn't improve. But for example, if I'm a leader, I'm not an leader, for mm -hmm. example, and I, I see a very bad, you know, uh, performance in their methodology and their interpretation, etc., etc. Et so, I can tell that the, the title is completely. Uh, for well, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have a fraudulent title. Uh -huh. It's got to reflect actually what you've done. So in a sense, what we're trying, we're trying to do, why, why are we trying to go back? Mm -hmm. Give us a title. What is it you've done? I mean, it, it's never been slightly sort of jokey about it. Oh, yeah, definitely. But it, it must reflect sort of what is it you take to do. Again, my concern is the ethical thing to do is, you know, the drug, drug company for example, uh, sponsored uh, articles, they say, for example, Naxapar, well, that, that etc. Drug companies sponsored For example. Yeah, very difficult. Yeah. I mean, I would not buy a drug company sponsored. I mean, for example, if, uh, if I write on Naxapar, for example, mm -hmm. and treat PE, for example, uh, Naxapar uh, treats PE mm -hmm. better than what okay. So, uh, it might be a very tiny thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you, you also should, you have to take ethical responsibility. Mm -hmm. There was just a question about the ethical responsibility for authors and titles. Titles should actually reflect what's in the paper. Um, and, the, and the responsibility for that is the author. That was just a question that came up just now. So it's, it's quite fun having the Dirty Doctors one, but you might not actually have it as, a, as an actual title. It'd be more boring. Do you want to find out? We have to apologise if you came to this as an after-lunch session to sleep. Someone has just said that's what they came for. We haven't let them. Even change as well. I mean, the chemo is a problem. Uh, you, know, it's a ch um, you know, the children are not in the hearing test. Um, we would want to move, we would, you know, in a sense, it, that was a problem which we knew from key measure would be 100% um, uh, of children. That's what we want. So we gathered the information, you know, we, actually, we, we did an audit. And we then looked at it. Because then there's a bit, they did the children's that actually, uh, we can't understand. We actually then realised that it was the doc junior doctors that did this. Yeah. Um, so our strategy of change was to change the task over to um, analysis. Um, that took some time, but for resistant, whatever, whatever, but you know, we gave the data, etc. And then when we did it, we reassessed it, and we had got to 100% the next steps. Actually, if you're going to watch it, lessons learned, you need to look at tasks. You so might include in your early senses. Yeah, yes, 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 absolutely. We 100% should get done. We want everyone to have this. So if, on the other hand, it was just... 
treated aspirin after the myocardial infarction, you might say, well, actually, we'd expect it to be 95% because of people who are allergic to aspirin, yeah. so that's what we'd be yeah. aiming for. Yeah. Well, something like that. Duncan, you've turned your mic off and they can't hear at the back. Oh. <laughs> I'll repeat it some other time. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Turn it on and say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Can I be heard sorry, now? There? Yeah, the, okay. the core message is, is read the journal you're submitting to. Make sure you've cited the, the couple of relevant articles uh, that appeared in that journal related to your topic because it's very likely those people will be reviewers of you, and they'll be more impressed if you cite their work. How's that? And any questions or co comments on that? How many of you have had papers rejected and wondered why? <laughs> yeah, quite a few of you. Okay. No. I mean, in a sense, um, the reviewers' um, comments are often, often helpful, but, 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 but not. Um, it, it's, uh, it's okay now, is it? Um, but I think it's a very good piece of advice. You need to make sure you've actually got enough of the, li the literature um, um, in it. And I, I think my piece of advice is just to get writing. Um, I, th I think that actually, you, I think you should try and write um, often. Just, just get used to writing. Um, because the more you do, the easier it gets. And just be critical of, of your writing. Write for yourself. Write things for you know, your peers. And God, just get used, to, uh, get used to writing. If it's writing something you do twice a year, then it's going to be difficult and you're probably going to put it off. Give yourself a timetable for writing. You know, put some time aside and do it. Don't worry if writing feels difficult. Everyone says, oh, it's too difficult. And I, I know exactly what you mean. But it's not just us as amateur writers that this happens to. I heard William Boyd, who was a, who's an author, writes very good novels, saying he actually has to almost sort of pin himself down to the chair sometimes to actually get writing. So that happens to everyone. It's not because you can't write. It is normal. So you've got to find some sort of structure, some way of doing it. If I'm going to write something sort of significant, I always have to tidy my study first. I don't know why. Um, but it, it's, and I've come to terms with that. And so I, oops, so I just now know that that's what I have to do. That's how I sit down and write. The other thing with, with laptops and with PCs is actually now, I don't know how people did it with quill and parchment. Because actually you can just blur onto the, onto the screen. 
And then you can become an editor, then you edit it. So you pretend it's somebody else's, then you can edit it. And I find that actually quite a useful process. It's just to almost have sort of verbal diary, just bleh on the screen, write, it doesn't matter that the sentences aren't right to start with, put it down, then come back to it two or three day, days later, and then edit it. You'll find that the thinking that has gone on in your head during that time, you've actually, something's happened to the back of your brain, that's actually, you, you've managed to process some of those thoughts, and things are, are, are much clearer. So I really recommend that you seriously do try to write, whatever, you, you finish what you've been writing now, and just, when you get back, just sit down and actually write it as an abstract, or as a, even, for, for, even um, try, try to submit it for publication. But if you don't, don't just do it and put it to one side and then the next time you have a project write it and put it to, and put it to one side keep on writing then it'll become much easier and then you might not put everything up for publication but you'll then get used to doing it and actually think about the, think about the structure um, and I think also think about that sort of structure as you are doing your improvement work because actually it is the context it is the problem J just tr try and think about it in the, um, in, in the way that you do it the bit that um, looking at a quality improvement papers, the ones that are mostly rejected, is they don't say anything about the strategy for change or its implementation. Suddenly things are magically better. And actually imagine there must have been a bit of a row on that ward. Somebody didn't like it. There must have been some difficulties. And sometimes you see the strategy for change is, and we presented the audit data at a, at a medical staff round. Well, in all the change um, manuals, presenting data at medical staff rounds is not top of the list of, of mechanisms for change. It doesn't really work just presenting it once. Now, yes, you might present it, but there's other stuff that's been going on. It's really trying to get at what actually happened, what was, what was the reality. So, big bit of advice, just write. Keep on writing, get used to it and get good at it. Jane. Um, thank you. And, and I think my piece of advice, an extension of that, is, and it's particularly related to quality improvement work, I think, would be to to write notes as you're going along, just keep, keep a sort of record of your project and what you're doing, because, almost like a diary or a blog, um, because that will, you'll do that rather informally and you'll do it in terms of who said what to whom and why. Um, and it'll give you those little insights about specific instances that, when you, that are most helpful to other people so that when you do come to write it up, um, you can look back at your notes and remember... Um, Rather than, you know, the, the, we, 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 can, we met some barriers on the ward. Well, that's not very helpful to other people, but actually the fact that, that w one group of the, the ward clerks decided to dig in their heels um, and, and how you overcame that is much more valuable to people than, than a, a sort of non-specific non barrier um, or a non-specific success. So, so my, my, apart from keeping notes, my central piece of advice is remember to be very specific. You know, what, what, is, what does that mean, you met, you met barriers? Well, you know, who, who did what to whom and how did you get over it? <laughs> Anyone read a book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance? It's this cult book, probably six or seven, 70s cult book. There's a lovely bit in it about note-taking. And actually, I think Jane's advice about just writing things down, just keeping a, um, a, a notebook. And actually, if you, look, if you read the biographies or autobiographies of writers, the thing that they do is to keep um, notes and take notes. And actually, scientists do that too. I think maybe we should do it as we, as we do go on our improvement journeys. We've got time for about two or three questions. Any questions to any of us? To the question, will you publish my paper, I don't know. Um, so let's get that one out of the way. How do you incorporate um, sort of unusual um, activities in terms of a, pro of a, a, a PI process? I give an example. So in our circumstances in New York, um, we at the hospital we have a patient, um, I'm sorry, we have a congestive heart failure task force, and what we decided to do to take the pharmacist and incorporate the pharmacist with a home care nurse and go into the home of a patient to find exactly what medications need to be reconciled. But the notion that the ultimate medication reconciliation is in the patient's home. So that was just one patient's home and we got a whole lot of information from that. Is it applicable for other home environments that we are not going to visit? Or how do we incorporate that one visit? And the findings. You, you mean as a, as a paper? Yes. I mean I, I mean, I think there is a way in which that could be written up um, as, as, uh, as a paper. It means it's one off. It's not improved. You know, it's, it's, it's a, you'll find a journal in which you could write um, a, a, a style of paper that, that, that actually almost asks the question. 
is as to how you do that. I mean, I worked in a hospital where the director of nursing said the, the reason we have problems after discharge is because you discharge somebody from team and place at the same time. So they, they had a project where actually the hospital team did the first bit of community care and then the community team took over. So you actually did that. I mean, I, I, I can see a way in which that could be written up because I think that's quite an interesting novel idea and you might find that there's a, you could write it as an editorial or as a, as a short paper for a journal. You know, I mean, it's something about it being an idea. What happened? What was found? And then just asking the question, you know, is this something that others could use um, for, um, for, for improving quality? That's a question over there. Uh, uh, maybe this is a, a, a local problem, but I feel like I've been threatened through the institutional review board of my institution that if you move from doing something that just helps your patients, that's fine, but you try to share it like this, that somehow there's ethical or review problems, and I guess I find that intimidating. Do you have any words? I, mean, Duncan, I think it's a U.S. more than a U.K. problem. Duncan. Is you, are you, oh, turn it on. Turn it on. Duncan, you're turned off. The uh, human subjects review process uh, in not quite understanding quality improvement is a long-standing issue uh, that's reached the, the head of NIH uh, in the United States being very concerned about this because of the problem. It is a problem, and there's no need short solution to it. Uh, I'd be happy to answer your question for the next four hours, or not answer the next four hours. It is not such a problem in the UK because I think a thing of things are thought to be quality improvement and is actually not patient identifiable by identifiable data. Then it, it, it's very different. The issue is not to be able to to write something in which I could I, I could identify my father blah 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 bum. It, so it has to be aggregate data. And sometimes you do get in the UK. You, you go to an ethical. You see a little note saying um, uh, ethical committee looked at this and decided that no speci special permission was needed. Um, but it is, it is I, I agree with Duncan, I, um, actually some years ago, was actually had a very heated exchange with, with some people in the US, w just at the time when audit came in about this. And I think the Australians have a similar problem, am I right? Yes. And uh, it's, it's tough for you, and I think you should be able to share um, information that will help give the data that would support approaches to quality improvement. I would say it's ethic unethical not to do it. Double negative there. Question. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm a university lecturer and I'm poster presenter here in the conference. Thanks, Excellent. God. Excellent. Yeah, thanks. But uh, I really f uh, usually uh, find a problem in how to start writing. Okay, how can I bring my thoughts on the paper? This is the bigger problem for me. Does anybody else so have that problem? <laughs> yeah, you, you and many others. I mean, it was going back to actually having a process, sitting down. And I, I certainly found just, just actually, just, just letting go and just writing, putting it down, and then coming back and ordering it. And, and Jane's six serving men can be quite good as, as a structure. And the structure should, might be able to help you with that. Just go through those things, just put something into each. But I, I think it's a common problem. The thing to do is just nail yourself down to that chair. Um, glue your fingers to the keyboard. <laughs> On that note, we have to stop because our time's up, but we'll be here to answer more questions. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.